I think uh, Kaz has played a very tactical game here. Got my pen, got my paper, and I was like, right, I want to beat Yanks now. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, how about that? Like, she was so intimidating. Great tackle from Williams. We, we grew up playing against each other. Trying to play it to Smith. Yeah. Going to sit on the bench, we've got to pick one now. <laughs> I wouldn't mind managing that team. Hello and welcome to the England Dream Team Team Debate with me, Rachel Stringer, and two super special guests, two former Lionesses with over 250 caps between them, Karen Carney and Rachel Yankee are here. And today, guys, you are going to take on the role as manager and you're going to get to select your own teams okay so as with any team selections there may be a few differences so we're going to basically let you guys talk us through your teams one line at a time and if there are any differences you will both have 30 seconds to try and convince me why your player should get a spot in the team Kaz do you think you're going to be better at the role of a player manager than Rachel will be? Well, I won't be a player in my team. I think I'll just manage and uh, and watch. But um, as soon as you said manage, I did get a little bit competitive, got my pen, got my paper, and I was like, right, I want to beat Yanks now. So uh be interesting to see how we our two 11s pan out. Um, Rachel, you've been coaching since you were pretty young as well. Do you think maybe your extra kind of coaching knowledge, you think you're a better manager than Karen? <laughs> oh, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> um, I think I've picked a team that uh, I like the style of how they can play football. So um, we go out and we play well, we'll, we'll batter Kaz. <laughs> okay, you're going for style, okay. And okay, Karen, I'm going to ask you as well, can you remember back to your first call up and what it was like actually being on that side of things, waiting for the phone to ring? Did you have a a kind of, I guess, expectation that you were going to get picked for your first England debut? No, I think I actually got called up, funny enough, because um, Yanks had to pull out for an injury. So <laughs> I got called up in standby. Um, and I was at my boarding house and uh, I got the call and I thought, oh, what's the best way to celebrate? And I went and, and, and got a, a McDonald's, which was highly unprofessional me at the time to celebrate. So. Um, yeah, it, yeah, exactly, Yanks. So um, thanks to Yanks, who didn't go to that camp, she actually started my England career. So thanks, mate. This is so we know Karen is manager. Karen's manager should be able to be giving the um, the players in her squad maybe McDonald's instead of some nice nutritious food. Anyway, Rachel, um, how well? I guess how stressful was it picking a team and being responsible for putting players in, other than being on the other side like you usually are waiting for that call yourself. Well, um, you know, I wanted to be generous, just like I was generous to Kaz in getting her into the England team. <laughs> um, no, it, it, it was hard because there's so many quality players. Um, it's hard to leave people out. And um, I think I could justify a reason for everybody when I was looking on it as to why they should be in the team. But like I said, I just went for for people that um, I thought played in a sort of style of football that I liked. So whether we win or lose, who knows, but we'll have fun. OK, well, let's go first with the keepers who you have both chosen. OK, Kaz, you're up first. Please tell everybody who your keeper is. I pick Karen Barsley. OK, Karen Barsley for Karen. Rachel, you went with? I went with Pauline Coke. OK. So nice to start things. It's a bit different. You've both come with a different player. Karen, I'm going to give you 30 seconds first to tell everybody and convince me why Karen should be in your squad, OK? She's been consistent now for a number of years, performed at major tournaments, um, numerous tournaments now. So I think she brought a calmness. I thought she was fantastic in Canada in 2015 and really settled that back line for England. And has gone from strength to strength. But the biggest one for me is just the presence. When you want to come up against a goalkeeper or you're an attacker, you want someone that looks intimidating. And I think she's got that in the nicest possible way. Um, I think she's got that kind of presence of a big goalkeeper. And, and that's why I went with Karen Barsley. 
Okay, okay, quite convincing. I think you even did it within the time, so that was good. Rachel, are you worried about that? Did you like kind of what Karen had to say there about Karen Bardsley? Yeah, definitely, I liked it. I, 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 I agree with it as well. So, um, yeah, very good choice. Okay, well, presence was a big factor there. Rachel, it's your now time to say why Pauline Cope should make the team. 30 seconds on the clock starts now. Well, when you want to talk about presence, you have to be looking at Pauline Cope. There's there's no bigger presence than Pauline Cope. Um, I think everything that, that Karen stated there about a goalkeeper, you know, shot stopper, uh, good, good at 1v1s, you know, how they command their back line. Pauline Cope had that. Um, but I go back to presence and, and vocal. You know, when the opposition were coming out and you see Pauline Cope, the size of her... The, the, the loudness of her, um, it definitely put up opposition to play against her. So um, for me, Pauline Cope has, has got to be the number one. I'm actually going to go with Karen Bardsley because, Kaz, I think you seem to have a little bit more passion, sorry, Rach, um, okay. about Karen. And I think you kind of were, I guess you bigged up the present thing. And then, Rachel, I'm not saying you did copy what Karen had to say, but maybe you kind of took a few of her words. <laughs> and when you're speaking about the present, so you I'm going to go. Really cope. <laughs> so I do, like, in fairness to, uh, to Yanks, you know, playing against Pauline Cope, she was so intimidating, wasn't she, Yanks? Like, yeah. I, I'd agree with that. And she would, I remember, like, playing when I was 17, I was petrified of her. So in terms of present she definitely had it and she had no airs of grace to tell her own back line about them if they'd done something wrong and that was even scary like even if you're looking at an opposition she's having a go at her back line like you just didn't you didn't want to mess with her like that's how i looked well, at it I played against her um Rach, uh, uh, karen sorry you've now convinced me that pauline Cope makes a team I'm sorry that you just actually backed up <laughs> Rachel's argument. I can't go against you both now. You just said, oh, actually, in Pauline's defence. I'm still on the bench, you've got to pick one now. No, I, I yeah. completely picked one because you've both now sold me Pauline Cope. So, uh, absolutely no question at all. Pauline Cope makes the keeper position in our dream team. Moving down the line, we're going to go to the back four because we're obviously doing a 4-4-2 formation for our dream team. And you've both gone for Alex Scott and Rachel Unit. Karen, I'll come to you first because this is, you don't have to explain it yourself. Why were these two in your team? I think the difficult part was actually not getting Lucy Bronze in the team. Um, but I went with Alex Scott at right back. I think I think people forget Alex was, was the best right back in the 2007 World Cup. Um, she was so good going forward. She could score vital goals. She got one, I know not for England, but the Champions League final. Uh, she she won it for Arsenal. But I think defensively, she was she was quality. She never really got beat. Positional sense was very, very good. And she just had a never say die attitude. The unit was fantastic. Uh, you know, fantastic player, just a reader of the game. Uh, people did talk about um, her pace and her lack of pace, but I think she made up with it, with her positioning. She understood where to be how to cover, how to get herself out of out of a one-to-one a -one race. Um, and like Kaz said, she had a wonderful left foot. It was fantastic. I don't think um, when people would speak about Rage Unit, they would say that she was a great talker um, and loud and, and everything as, as a leader like that. But playing in front of her, the, the information that she gave me was, was vital to us uh, having a great partnership. Well, that was an easy discussion. You both agreed on that. But what you didn't agree on is your centre-back partnership. Karen, who did you have in your squad? I had Steph Horton and Laura Bassett. And Rachel, you would you like to tell everyone who you went for? Anita Asante and, um, and Casey Stoney. Okay, well, you do know now who everyone went for. But Karen, you're going first and you have to tell us why you went for Steph and Laura. You have 30 seconds, like you did for telling a reason for your keeper on the clock to try and convince me why those two should be the centre-back partnership. Well, I went with the partnership because of how well they did in Canada in 2015, but <clears throat> I think for me, Steph's the best centre-half that I've seen and has improved as time's gone on. She can play out the back, she's good at set plays. 
she's just brave. Like in possession as a manager, I want someone that can play out and she can do that. Uh, she's quick and she rarely gets beat and she's just very, very reliable. And as a captain, as a leader, she's got that presence. I think with Bass, I think she was probably the first centre half that I saw that would just put her foot on the ball and just wait for the opposition to kind of come out to her and then play. She's very intelligent, again, brave, very aggressive. Ah, oh, it's not fair. One more time. There's two. There's two. I know it's hard and there's two. Um, I went for two players that uh, can play good with the ball at their feet, uh, two players that can read the game really, really well, and two players that I felt complement each other. And, and uh, when players always have strengths and weaknesses, they complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. So Anita Rosante, it's, it's so difficult to beat her 1v1. She's strong. She's, um, she's quick. Uh, we'd say that Casey probably has a lack of pace, but um, reading the game was brilliant. Stop! You didn't even get time to about Casey. It's a bit, a bit harsh, there's only 30 seconds for two players. Karen, I can see you nodding again. I hope you're now not going to agree <laughs> with Rachel <laughs> on these two as well. You like to hear. I, I think I was nodding because I felt Yank sold it really, really well there. Um, like, I, I, I love both of them and, and again, you always look at it when you played against them, what they brought, and they were so difficult. But I don't want to big them up because I want you to pick my two. So I'm going to learn my lesson from last time because I think I think my two should win. <laughs> I'm going to go with Karen on this one. And she didn't go with Rachel because of the partnership, like you said, at the World Cup there, you know, being such a, a great partnership. And I think, you know, I don't think anyone can disagree with either side, but my decision on this one, guys, is final. Neither of you two can sway me any further. <laughs> let's move down the line a step further. Okay, let's go to the midfield section. Why, Karen, are you not in your own team? <laughs> I think it was difficult because, well, I didn't want to pick myself and I felt the four of the people I picked um, are just unbelievable and I'll explain about that in a minute, but I could not not pick the four that I picked because I just think they were they're outstanding. But you've seen that Rachel's picked herself, right? Yeah, but if I was Rachel, I would have picked myself. If I was Rachel Yankee, and she's in my team, so how could you not pick? I know she's there and she doesn't want to see it, so she probably put me on mute for this bit, but you'd have to pick Rachel Yankee 100%. But, Rachel, you have picked Karen. Were you being nice there? Because she's kind of saying she wouldn't pick herself. I, I paid her, I paid her. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you paying anyone? I don't believe it. <laughs> um, no, I think uh, Kaz has played a very tactical game here. She's very, she's very tactical. What she wanted is she wanted 30 seconds of me praising her, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You knew this would happen. <laughs> I'll never get it again, that's why. I'll never get 30 seconds of praise in my whole life. The rest of the time I've got to tell off. So I'll take the 30 seconds of praise if I can get it. <laughs> For this one, Rachel, shall I let you go first and say, why have you got Karen Carney in your team? Um, I, I just think as midfielders, as attackers, you need people that can wow the fans. You need people that can get bums off seats and get people excited that can create moments in games and, and, and Kaz can do that. She's got an engine on her so she can work up and down. I know we're playing like a 4-4-2. She can be disciplined. I have no doubt that she can do that side, but she's definitely a, a player that can excite and, uh, and cause problems to opposition. So she has to be in there. Stop. Karen, was that some quite nice words there said by Rachel? Yeah, surprise. Thanks, Yanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though, okay. I'm, I'm still petrified that, that Rachel would be my manager and if I didn't do those things, I know I'd be getting an earful. And the worst thing is, is when you play on the wing, when you're closest to the bench and next to the manager, <laughs> I know that she would be shouting at me if I didn't do my job. So, um, no, I'd, I'd work hard for you, Yanks. But cool. Karen, obviously you didn't put yourself in. Instead, you had Jill Scott in your team. So it's now your 30 seconds to say why, instead of yourself, you went with Jill and why she should get the role in this team over you, basically. You have to do some convincing to this one. Your time on the clock, 30 seconds, starts now. I think Jill, she absolutely works hot. She works her socks off. She covers so much ground. People forget how technically good she is. Um, and more importantly, it's a character. 
there's something about Jill that you go into major tournaments and you need Jill Scott. You don't win without her. And I think we've missed her in last two semi-finals and that's cost us potentially at tournaments where you just need that winning mentality. She knows how to grind it out and she's just experienced. She's got long legs, gets there. She makes it really difficult. She scores big goals as well. I'm going to go with Karen's player in the form of Jill Scott. And let's go with the fact that she's she's still in the game as well. She's still doing great things. She is now a player manager as well, isn't she? Um, at Man City. So I think it's important that she's still in there for people to, to know about. Let's go further down still to your strike partnership. Karen's looking down at her notes, just refreshing who she picked. So obviously you both picked Kelly Smith. So. I'm not going to get, obviously, you to convince us why, but Rachel, I'll just come to you. Why Kelly, I guess, because you played with her, I guess, for a longer period of time. Karen, I guess you kind of looked up to her when you kind of started out your England career, especially, and maybe she was kind of like a role model figure for you. But Rachel, what was it like to always be surrounded by a player like Kelly? Well, we, we grew up playing against each other as kids, and then obviously... I did know that, up in North London. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we used to play against each other and even from an early age, Kel stood out and, you know, she was fantastic. Just the confidence on the ball, confidence to try things, to have a go. When, when, like I said before, when you need someone to, to create moments of inspiration, to do something off the cuff that, that, you know, will just give a wow factor, there's no bigger player than, than, than Kelly to do that. And, you know, she, she, I think she's proven that with her consistency playing over here, playing in America. She was actually quite funny on the pitch, wasn't she, Yank? She would um, completely different off the pitch to on it. Like, she was an absolute animal beast. And you'd be like, what? And then you go and see her after the game, she'd just be sat in the corner reading a book. And I'm like, you've just pulled someone's hair or you've just done something like mad. You scored a hat trick or done whatever. And I don't know. Again, you can't produce another Kelly Smith. She was a one in a lifetime. But let's have a look at who paired up then up front for you both. Could you obviously choose chose someone different here? So, Ellen White for you, Karen, and Karen Walker for you, Rachel. So, Karen, you're going to go first with why Ellen White is up front in your team. And the time starts, 30 seconds on the clock, starts now. At any international tournament, Ellen White was always reliable, would always score a goal, big moment. She saw it in last World Cup, but if you go back again, she was always a massive player. Her work rate, um, she was great in the air, physically strong, can finish, always gives 100% fit. And when you're in tournament football, you've got to be able to play back-to-back -back games and Ellen White can do that and be consistent. 24 seconds to sell Ellen White. That was solid. <laughs> I got the eye. I thought, oh God, I've got to hurry up. <laughs> she went for it on that one. Okay, Rachel, Karen Walker, her reasons start now. Um, I think Karen Walker is, you know, definitely one of the best goal scorers um, that England have ever had. Uh, a player that could you know, receive the ball, you know, tight on opposition. You just didn't, she was so strong, you didn't get it. You, they didn't get a chance to get it off of her, could link up other players. I played up front in my early years, uh, partnered her. She was just a goal scorer. Um, she could build up play, but all her thought process was score, score goals. Mm. Pretty good timing. Stop on 30 seconds. Yeah. You've got that sorted. Um, I think for that one, I'm probably going to go with Ellen White. I liked what you said, Karen, about her, her fitness and her ability to kind of be up for every game and kind of keep the fitness going and Ellen does make the team next to Kelly Smith. So guys, two teams were entered by Karen and Rachel. We now have our dream team. Let's go through who you both came up with for this dream team. So it's Pauline Cope. Then we have Alex Scott, Steph Horton, Laura Bassett, Rachel Unit. Then we have Jill Scott, Katie Chapman, Farah Williams, Rachel Yankee, Kelly Smith, and Ellen White. It's a pretty solid team there, isn't it? I wouldn't mind managing that team. Thank you so much to Rachel and Karen there for selecting their England dream team. If you guys at home want to have a go at playing manager yourself, then head on over to the FA website where you can have a go at picking your own team. 
Thank you so much to Rachel and Karen for joining us. We hope you guys at home had fun. Thanks for watching. Bye.